Hello everyone! Hi, I'm Jasmine and in this episode of Rescue 995, we will be interviewing one of our hazmat specialists who will be sharing with us his roles and responsibilities he holds in SDDF. So, let's go! Hi Won Tae, can you please tell us more about yourself? Hi Jasmine, I'm Lieutenant Won Tae from Alexandra Fire Station and I'm the Rotor Commander over here. This is my second year in service and prior to this, I served my NS in, in SDDF as a Section Commander in Clementi Fire Station. Subsequently, I took on the MHA Scholarship to further my studies and here I am, back in, back in Alexandria Fire Station. So, Ante, can you share with us what does a hazmat specialist do? Hazmat stands for hazardous material. So, as a hazmat specialist like myself, we are trained to respond to hazmat incidents that may involve chemical, biological, radiological and explosive agents. What are the criteria needed to join as a hazmat specialist? All senior officers like myself, we have to undergo hazmat specialist course during our Rota Commander course and we will all commission as a hazmat specialist. However, not all officers will get to go to a hazmat station like Alexandra Fire Station. So during the course, all officers will learn in depth on both theoretical and practical components of hazardous materials and response procedures involving them. Can you describe how hazmat training is like? What are the most challenging or interesting part being a hazmat specialist? So for me, hazmat training was the most challenging and the most interesting part of the Rota Commander course. It was the most challenging because there was a lot of studying to be done learning about all the potential hazards of many types of hazmat incidents and also the response procedures for individual cases. Also, the entire operation is done in either high-performance suit or the CA suit which can be very hot and uncomfortable. What made the training really interesting for me was the application of the theory that we learned during our practical sessions. It was really cool for all of us to do the things that we usually see in the movies. What are some of the equipment you will bring along when attending to a hazmat incident? The most important equipment for all hazmat cases will be the detectors. The detectors will help us to gather information to identify the type of incident, agents involved and allow us to establish zoning. The zoning is determined by the levels of reading reflected on the detectors. Zoning is very important to prevent contamination and also to alert the responders to take necessary actions such as donning off proper PPE for the respective zones. Speaking of PPE, it is also another equipment that we will have on all the time. The type of PPE we wear will depend on the nature of the incident and also the zone that we are working in. Can you show us how you don the hazmat high performance suit? So, Wante, how does it feel to be inside the suit? Oh, okay, okay. Sorry Jasmine, I couldn't hear what you said just now. It is very close to being in a sauna and it is very hot inside. The only part that is not hot is our face as cold air is supplied from our breathing apparatus set. SCDF's hazmat specialists can also communicate with one another either via hand signals or through the communication devices which they carry in their suit. How long can a hazmat specialist be expected to last in the suit? So it depends on multiple factors. The fitness of the specialist, the environment and the nature of the incident but usually our breathing apparatus will allow us to last about 40 to 45 minutes. Oh, so what happens after the time is up? So after 45 minutes, the warning whistle will sound. By then, we should have a second team on standby to take over the operation. And with this, we have come to the end of this exclusive Rescue 995 interview with Lieutenant Shin Wante. Till next time, bye-bye!